Hi, and thanks for tuning in again. Um, today, I've got a good friend and colleague, uh, this is Boyd Gibbons. Say hi, Boyd. Hi. Hello, everyone, and hi, Dave. Good to see you. Thanks, man. Thanks for agreeing to be on this podcast today. Um, so I've been working with Boyd for seven, is it, or eight years, somewhere around there, I think. Um, Since with, 2013. Yeah, yeah with, in a company called Energy Drive. And um, Boyd uh, originally came on uh, as someone who was doing the cold calling and finding the initial leads. Um, but uh, Boyd, Boyd, maybe you could just introduce yourself a little more and uh, tell us a little bit about what you do and, uh, and, and who you are. Sure. Um, I, when I met Dave, I started as a, um, I was finding leads for, for Energy Drive and Dave, introducing Dave to those companies and really trying to set up warm leads and grow a sales funnel or a lead funnel for Energy Drive. We, we called it origination. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. So um, we, we worked very closely together, Boyd and I, in, uh, and uh, it was a very successful partnership. But we're in a, a new territory. All of a sudden, in the last four weeks, the world has turned upside down. And what we used to do, Boyd, you know, driving up to someone's office, making the appointment, shaking their hand, walking from the reception area to their office, building rapport with them all the way, looking around their office for signs of something that we can have a conversation about, all these good things that us sales guys do. We can't do anymore because we're bound by this thing called online video. And so what I wanted to ask you, Boyd, for us a little chat around is how do we sell, um, how do we sell in this new paradigm of the video conference call? How do we convey empathy? How do we build rapport? How do we connect with people? Uh, all of these good things. So I'm just going to throw you right in the deep end there. Cool. What are you thinking? Dave, um, I've, I've taken about three weeks to develop that thinking. Um, and I am quite happy to say I think I have found a way forward in this new paradigm of approaching customers and growing um, valued sales funnels. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to go over that process. Mm. It is quite different, um, although not so different. Okay. But, but definitely, to, definitely to establish that rapport with someone you've never met face to face is a is a challenge, but it it is I found it even better um, and quicker to establish rapport. And the way that I do that, I would like to sh share with you, is more in a bite-sized, phased approach. Please take us through it. Be, I'm fascinated. Yeah, no, I'll do that. It, it, it's still in motion, and I have combined. I have combined. Uh, systems that I was using before that would be I was about to say um, older systems and I was going to include LinkedIn in that because LinkedIn was pre was pre COVID um, lockdown so so generally I will identify a potential lead and I will approach them gently on LinkedIn um, finding their contact details possibly connecting on LinkedIn and sending them a, a, a basic message just to establish uh, contact, but not necessarily engaging with them. I don't want to engage with them. I just want them to know my name and the, the company in Drive that, that I represent. Um, so I, I give that a while, and then I back that up with um, a small email um, just to leave another mark. Um, so that they remember my name. So that, that is how I'm initially approaching people. Um, so I make about three different contacts uh, with somebody at a company that I want to engage with before I try and phone them. So, you, you're, so part of your rapport chain here is small little contact points with them over a short period of time, right? Correct. Yeah. And what I'm, what I'm actually doing is I'm setting up for the initial cold call. 
Um, I'm, able to, I'm able to get that person's email address through different applications that I use. I'm, I'm able to get their cell phone number and, and their landline. But I very rarely will phone them on their cell phone because I find that that is a little bit cheeky. You know, and, I and agree. It, and it I've always said if I have a landline and a cell phone, I'll choose a landline every time. Cell phones are very personal to people. And if you take that number too quickly, use it too quickly, you can actually uh, push out the rapport building stage uh, by some way. Uh, it is better to find someone on their landline where the paradigm they're working in is still a working one. Um, yeah. I don't know if you agree with that. No, no I do agree with that. Um, one of my, my motive in bite, in bite size approaches is to try and get a phone call in as a small introduction and to request permission to send through an initial one page um, headline presentation, not an entire presentation. I'm, I'm trying to gain permission to send that. Yes. If I can get permission to send that, doc, that, that document, that is the, that is the beginning of uh, the rapport process. So it's a phase building process. Um, Correct. Yeah, yeah. No, I love it. I, I like this. I yep. think this is something we were doing, you know, prior to COVID in terms of trying to get to that initial meeting in the office, you know, a number of yes. short steps. Okay, so let's say you've done these short steps now and the big ones come in. You said, can we do a, a video conference call? And the guys come back and said, yes. Take us through this. Okay. Um, D Dave, just before just before the video, the video, I try and get a um, a phone call through to him to to see if he did um, if he did go through that one pager, and um, then from there I try to approach a um, a video call with him to go through a bigger presentation. Um, so it's basically on the fifth or the sixth touch. Um, that I'm trying to get permission to get onto a video conference because um, that, is, that is a big step. I think this, by... is a, this is a crucial point to underline here, Boyd, especially for guys that are listening, how we try to get in front of someone too soon. We, we jump the steps, trying to get there too quickly, not we're rushing it, and understanding that this is a dating game. We, we're doing this, with doing it slowly, little moon dance here. Yes slowly yeah. getting towards it definitely something i want to underline for our listeners yeah yeah it's it's basically establishing a trust factor like that and yeah as as soon as as soon as he smells a a salesman or or he sniffs you trying to establish um or he, if he is if he suspects motive he will he will block that as you know or she yeah he, he or she will block that yeah as as you know mm. Um, if I do manage, um, I mean, I do have some examples. If I do manage to get a, um, a presentation in, I, I will spend as little time as possible on that video presentation. Um, it's, it's just to establish a comfort, a comfort zone. And from, the, from there, I'll ask permission to send through a small video clip. Okay, so, so my entire motive is not really to bring the punch across, the sales punch across. It is to establish a meeting from a, from a meeting, always keeping the next meeting in mind. So as establishing, you, a, establishing rapport or a sense of trust, a building sense of trust between you and the potential new client, I understand. Correct, yeah. From, from beginning to that point, which could be the, the sixth meeting, in mind the whole time is to gain enough trust and a few laughs here and there so that when it comes time to to speak to him about a possible saving on a low-hanging fruit application um, it's an easy step for him to take because if i if i do that in the first or second call go straight for the goal and ask him what applications have you got on site? Uh, we could possibly save on that. It's too quick. The trust is broken. 
and wow. so I do want to stress that. So let's. So we've spoken a little bit about building trust um, and doing it over five, six, seven different touch points, which I really enjoy. I think that's a, that's a great way forward. How do we deal with the issue of empathy? We know people, trust and empathy do go together. When you're with somebody, you know, 70% of our language is communicated through body language, right? And of course, video is helpful because it does allow for some of that, but you certainly don't get still the, the sense of who someone is as clearly as you do if you're in the room. And conveying empathy, as we found, the, the sense that you care and understand. Maybe you could express some of your insights into that. How do we bring empathy into your sales pitch? Good, good question, Dave. Um, I, think, I think on that call, the initial approach with, with that person would be, how are you doing? in this time and how how are your colleagues and your company dealing with this time how are you, how are you all coping and um are you managing to get done what you need to get done um to to get through this time so that is a great that, what i found is that is a great way um to establish empathy um and is and and keep them away from what you are trying to achieve as long as possible mm. and keep them on that point of themselves, how they're coping, how their family's coping mm. without making it, without making it obvious what you, what you're doing. Mm. I, I think, I, again, I think these are, these are learnings mm. that need to be spoken about much, much more, you know, the need to communicate trust, empathy, integrity, which is really the whole package. They want to see you, they don't know you from Adam. They haven't met you physically. You are an anonymous person to all intents and purposes on another screen. And, uh, and, and yet you are saying, you know, pay some attention to what I've got. I've got something worth listening to. How much of your own story would you share to a complete stranger on the other end of a video call? You know, in order to, to reach out and express empathy often requires that we firstly open up our own hearts or our own stories. How much of you do you share? Dave, um, I try to share as little as possible about myself, to, um, to, to be frank. It's, it's not about me. You know, and I find I can use one or two liners about where I am, my, my location, and how I am dealing with, with shutdown. But I'm very strict on not spending time on myself. Because the, the, reason, the reason being that is, that person is generally stuck at home uh, with his family. He doesn't, he doesn't have an outlet and he, he doesn't really want to know about you. <laughs> he wants to, he, he almost wants to talk about something that he can't talk to his direct colleagues about or to his company about challenges he's facing mm. that his family won't necessarily, no, not necessarily understand, mm. but here's a stranger in a similar position um, that has asked him a question that can get that conversation rolling more about himself. Now, this is, this is what's unique about this period of time, something you're picking up on. What's unique about this, this particular time is we are all in the same situation. We have a point of commonality. I mean, most of the struggles in a sales call is finding a point of commonality for which we can, then both can work out from, right? But immediately, this situation offers us that point of commonality. I'm stuck indoors, you're stuck indoors. We're both yeah. probably experiencing the same levels of frustration. Um, and I love it. Creating a safe place for someone to share about that, often to a complete stranger, has to be a, a great way of building that trust and empathy, right? Yeah. As an example, I have a potential customer um, that I'm engaging. And I think I've had maybe eight or so conversations with three people in that organization. Um, one, of the, one of the gentlemen being more open and um, he, he, is, he has opened up, whereas before, before shutdown, he was, he was shorter. He was shorter with, um, as in terms of if he, he didn't have time for me. He didn't have time to do anything. As I, as I approached him more and more in, in lockdown, 
so he gave more of himself but i kept those those um time slots very short and and my expectations and demands on him not that he knew they were demands uh, the questions i asked him and for for information i asked him about i kept it very short i didn't i didn't give him a workload yeah and i, I think I gave, that's, that's the other key isn't it is although people have a lot of time now I, the temptation is for us to just use that time but i don't i think we still have to be disciplined keeping these things short and respectful you know of the level of relationship we do or don't have right yeah so i mean you 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 think about it if some if a stranger got hold of you and asked you to fill out a form a survey form you roll your eyes um you, you don't want to do that you you've, you've got better things to do however if you ask to respond to one or two questions it's you do it it's done and dusted and that leaves a gap for a next a next conversation which could be fr which could be friendlier because I, I, he knows I, absolutely i love that we again saying is it's it's about one step at a time we have a small conversation now we have another conversation then and each time we're building towards something um yeah I, yeah I think i think so many times we can be so goal driven and rushed for our own benefit and our own motives we we don't look at it from the other person's um point of view and i i believe that's where we lose them i think that's a massive learning boyd we're going to bring it to a close we're going to try and keep these conversations short so that people can dive in but we will pick up and do a part two with you um next time i'd like to talk uh, about the use use of powerpoint and use of communication tools in a video conference call and maybe we can pick up some more on this big theme of empathy and trust within sales. Any last parting, sure. parting word from yourself there, Boyd? Yes. Um, uh, just on what you've just said, Dave, I, I, I think that PowerPoint is possibly not the way to go. <laughs> you know, I think that would be my parting comment. Well, let's, let's open that up for some discussion next time and talk about if PowerPoint isn't the way to go, what is and how can we uh how can we demonstrate that again boy thanks for being with us i hope that you as sure. well have gained something from this watch out for part two of boyd and dave on sales <laughs>